One of the things that I've been diving into a lot, and I was hearing this in, I think it was in this book I'm reading right now called uh, Nothing in This Book is True, and It's Exactly the Way Things Are, which is a hilarious book, and they go into tons of stuff, but they were talking about how kindness, right? Like when you, like we've all heard this, when you do something for someone else, you get you get it back. Well, why is that? It's because we're all the same consciousness living different experiences of life. And so even going to the store, if, you know, someone needs help putting their groceries in the car, right? Or I can put my cart back into the store, right? So they don't have to go out and get it. Those kind of things reverberate back. And like I said, how you do anything is how you do everything. So that's why I tell everyone as a small side note to return your shopping cart, because if you're going to do that, then you're more likely to do other things that are going to be kind and, and, you know, loving in nature. And when you start doing that, you, I mean, if you're putting that out, you must be that within, right? And so it starts allowing you to have these really wild experiences that are really what make up the experience of life for me. Plus, I'll just add to that great uh, practical example that, you know, the thing called mirror neurons, where mm. witnessing and uh, someone else doing something good or bad is going to affect you, even if it's just subconsciously, unconsciously. So you demonstrating to, you know, someone just driving by, they might not even be consciously aware, like, oh, that guy put his cart back. They might be just <laughs> passing you in his car. But so, but somewhere in his his awareness, he's registering your example. And it doesn't necessarily mean he's now going to put his cart back, but, but you're laying down a, 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 a concept and awareness of another human being doing something like that. Like, for example, um, I walk my dog all the time and uh, I almost every time will pick up some trash. Cause you know, mm. when she goes poop, you know, I've got a little bag anyway. And I'm always saying, damn it, I got to bring a bigger bag. I got to remember, you know, <laughs> to pick up, pick up more trash. <laughs> yeah. We need a bigger boat to pick up more trash. Not that her poop changes. It's just, there's always so much trash, but I'll tell you, um, there's an effect and I don't do it for this reason, but I know that when people, and sometimes people have witnessed me do it and they'll smile or whatever, but you never know. It might mean that they start doing that or just, it's so cool to witness another person doing something that's restorative and loving. And I'm not getting any benefit out of it. It's kind of gross. Trust me. I use the bag. I don't touch some of this stuff. It's disgusting, <laughs> yeah. but you know, those mirror neurons, our behavior is, is powerful. We can't discredit to your example, the, the small things we do that can have big impacts. And it's so funny too, because if you think about it, if our conscious mind is only 5% uh, viewing and observing what's actually happening and the subconscious is picking up 95%. And at the same time, if we watch a video, right? Of, you know, a homeless person getting given a house, right? We mm -hmm. feel that emotion in us, right? Because our conscious mind is watching it. Well, if our conscious mind is only 5%, Think about what 95% of that subconscious is doing. So now you add that same type of idea into someone watching subconsciously, you put a card away or something, right? It will trigger those same type of responses subconsciously. And then some of your programs and patterns that live in the subconscious might be able to come up. And when you get home, maybe you just feel like spending time with your dog, right? And you roll around on the ground with him for a little while because he's missing you all day instead of getting right back into work when you get home, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to put your shopping cart away the next time, but it's paying it forward, right? And then that dog, right, in, in this scenario might feel happier, right? And might be able to then you know, care for one of the animals in the house better or, you know, provide you with support the next time you need it. And so it's just this uh, this cyclical, uh, consistent paying it forward that I really think life is all about or it can be all about if people choose to make it that way because I choose to believe that life is beautiful because when I choose the opposite, my experience of life suffers. And so I yeah. choose to believe life is beautiful. And again, when you look into ancient doctrines, you know, it was never about knowing objectively if life was beautiful or life was loving or any of these things, or if we were God is about believing it. And that's what faith is, right? Like, you know, one thing religion got right was the idea of having faith. They just explained it in a way that was like, well, have faith in this one building that you pay us money in. But, you know, like the idea of faith <laughs> is a big thing, right? Because if you have faith, you're able to be balanced between masculine and feminine. Because faith to me is like, you know, for instance, hopping on this podcast. I'm like, okay, I'm going to show up on time. I'm going to rock it. And also I have the faith that everything that's meant to come out is going to come out. And the people listening are going to resonate and everything's going to be perfect. And so that's masculine and feminine being able to be in union with one another. And that is creation, right? Yin and yang, however you want to think about it. It is these opposing yet um, 
complementary forces of the universe that make up uh, our experience of life. And so by tapping into just these little things, like these little times we pay it forward to any of these things, we can bring more magic into our lives and magic with a K on the end, right? Not the kind yeah. of trickster magic, right? Not that I don't love some trickster magic. There's some cool stuff out there, but real magic, the magic that alchemists talked about, the magic that the ancient doctrines talk about, the magic that, you know, allegedly Jesus was performing, right? With the anointing oils and things like this. And so there's so much magic out there because at the end of the day, you know, we can't explain anything really about life. I and mean, we don't know, you know, if we're the only ones here, we don't know anything, right? And so, you know, when I, I love reading history and, you know, uh, you know, especially in school and them telling, yeah, this is exactly how it was, right? Columbus came here and, mm -hmm. you know, he was the first one to the Americas and, you know, all these things. And then you start hearing other history. It was like, oh, actually Columbus might not have been the best guy, you know, soft talking mm -hmm. knowledge, you know, probably mm -hmm. wasn't the best guy at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's brilliant.